Okay, everybody likes the tool hauls. I was gonna do some separate videos on some of these. I think I'm just gonna throw them all into a tool haul. I'll watch the analytics, and if I think that I need to make a separate video for any of this stuff, I will. Have you ever ordered anything, and then you received it, and you couldn't remember why you bought it? I think what I was doing was looking for a higher quality version of this tool here, so this is an HVAC wrench that I bought some time ago and I've kind of been looking for a higher quality version. And I must have put this in my cart and I was gonna research it later. This HVAC ratchet is for this kind of stuff, right? You run into this kind of stuff, these square set screws and all that. Uh, I guess are fairly typical in HVAC. These HVAC ratchets are a little harder to find. This is the Matador 4-in-1. If you're not familiar with these, they have four wrench sizes in one wrench. 10, 19, 13, and 17. So this Matador is not an HVAC ratchet. The thing that appealed to me about it is it's got 120 teeth in it. Uh, they got what's called smart drive, so they did a little bit different machining on here to try to prevent bolts from stripping off. The size 13 fits a lot of the clamping stuff on my mini mill. Uh, the only thing is, is that the size 13 faces down and then the direction selector is facing down. So if I need to switch direction, I have to lift it off the bolt. I have to change the direction and then put it on the bolt. And I guess that's kind of an advantage to these that have the direction changing on the side so it doesn't matter what side's facing up. I do not know where this is manufactured. Matador did not put that information on this tool. If you recognize this wrench as a rebrand, please comment. I would really like to know. Okay, this is a 3 8 Vera socket organization rail. It is magnetic. This piece can be removed to increase the spacing. So if you've got some really big sockets you want on this thing, you can remove this piece of plastic and get more spacing. I'll show on this one how I did that. So the magnets on this are surprisingly strong. This is three and a half pounds of sockets on this rail. If I put the rail on the side of one of my toolboxes horizontally, it'll stick. But if you bump it, it'll fall. But if I stick the rail to the side of the toolbox vertically, it's rock solid. So these sockets start to get oversized relative to this green ring right about here, and then they start pushing out the spacing, and this is maxed. This, these slide on here, and this spacing is maxed out. So that's an example of a lot of weight and a maxed out spacing on one of these Vera magnetic socket organizers. Quarter inch, again, I maxed out the spacing, and by the way, somebody commented in a previous video that Vera doesn't always index the laser etching on these sockets. Vera is doing something different in the manufacturing process when they laser etch these. They were all indexed exactly perfectly so they all face the right direction. But these less expensive sockets, the, the indexing of the labeling isn't always consistent on those. Oh, wait a minute here. Hold on, does this come out? Now what I'm wondering is, can I remove this piece to get more spacing on here? Let's take a look at this. Okay, if we peel that back, there is a little clip right there. We can get that and off of there like this. Okay, and then, oh, then we can take this piece out and we can get more spacing. Okay, that goes back in there, like that. Okay, put that back. Hey, now we got more spacing, okay. Okay, well, all right. Well, we just discovered a hack to get more spacing. 
I, did, I'm, I am going to put that back in here though. Okay, so this piece here has to face this way. And then this slides in underneath of it. Or is it this way? No, it's this way. Like that. So you see here two Hultaforsch branded hammers. And if you have a keen eye, you recognize this handle style from my Weha Electrician's Hammer review. And this is actually a Hultaforsch rebranded product. Hultaforsch makes a black handled version of this. The Hultaforsch version of this hammer does not have this striking protection here. Um, Hultaforsch also has an updated version of this hammer called the TREL. It's a little bit hard to find, but you can find it out there. It runs about $100. The Weha runs about $30. The Hultaforsch branded version of this hammer runs about $60. The Weha Electrician's Hammer is a really good deal at $30. Gabriel at Mew Review told me about all of this. He told me about these steel dead blow hammers. They make a straight peen. This is the ball peen. This is not just a steel hammer. This is a dead blow hammer. PB Swiss uses like discs or washers to do their dead blow. This isn't like that. This is something granular. It sounds granular. It doesn't sound like any kind of a disc mechanism for the dead blow. You can see that it is a through tang plus you've got this. I do not know where this is manufactured. So this is the Hulteforsch T-Block series of hammers. Here's another example. This is a smaller one. This is also a dead blow. You can hear the material in there, right? So Mew Review reviewed this hammer. Gabriel dug up a lot of interesting information about the Hultaforsch hammers. Gabriel found out that these hammers are actually originally a product of Tors Hammer, which is a Swedish brand and Hultaforsch acquired Tors Hammer. I will link to Gabriel's review of this hammer. Even though his video is in Portuguese, you'll be able to see the research that he did looking up patents. Big thank you and a big shout out to Gabriel and me review. And I'm gonna link to his video in my video. Give it a click, go watch it. It's very interesting information. I've learned a lot from Gabriel and I appreciate him very much. So that brings me to these Milwaukee pliers made in Germany by NWS. Gabriel again told me about these. And when I looked them up, I was shocked because I didn't ever remember seeing these in the United States. These are really nice looking pliers. I love this rebrand of NWS. If you're not familiar with NWS, this is NWS. This is the OEM. They manufacture these. So here's a Matador rebrand of an NWS. And here's an Engelbert Strauss rebrand of a VDE. Same handle style as this, which is the VDE handle style. Here's a closer look at a Milwaukee branded, made in Germany NWS pliers. This is the Milwaukee branded NWS manufactured, made in Germany, VDE, gorgeous water pump pliers. Here's a Milwaukee made in Germany by NWS, side cutters, beautiful. Again, Milwaukee branded NWS. Just beautiful tools. So these are NWS pliers. These are NWS screwdrivers. But NWS doesn't make screwdrivers. These screwdrivers are made for NWS by Philo. Philo is the OEM of these screwdrivers, the VDE and the non-VDE version of these. I reviewed this set in a previous video. I expressed some disappointment 
uh, particularly with the retention of this piece that goes into the top and gives you a quarter hex drive on the cap. These don't retain this piece. It's easily lost. Gabriel at Me Review had this set of NWS VDE. Uh, these are the non-slim style. And he informed me that the bit piece does retain in the VDE version. So I went out and bought the VDE set and I can confirm that yes, this one actually works right. And you pop it out, it's just a friction fit. You put that on there and you can drive that with something. So what is going on? You can see that the color of the metal is a little bit different on these adapters. Okay, this one falls out. Okay, you see the difference down here? This one has got an extra feature on it. So the one that works correctly has these little extra fins right here. So if I take this one, this is the one that came with this set. It does not retain. This one it does not retain. They didn't get it right the first time. So they fixed it. So this piece in this one, it retains. So that isn't the only issue with these. So this is the piece that doesn't retain. So these are the VDE and the non-VDE versions of the 6.5 by 1.2 by 150. These are both the same size handle. This piece does not even fit in this handle. And the piece fits in this handle. So let's take this improved piece that has the retention fins on it. It also does not fit in this handle and it fits and retains in this handle. So there was also some issue they had to fix with this size handle. So with all of that background information, if you're interested in these, skip the non-VDE set. Get the VDE set of these. My question for anyone out there, especially my viewers in Europe, have you ever seen this piece right here? This adapter, I haven't seen it anywhere, I don't even know if this was ever manufactured. This is the box that contained the non-VDE set. I know it has a photo of the VDE handle. This is the box that contained the VDE set. And they removed this picture from this box. And I'm wondering if this was ever even manufactured. So if anybody has any information about whether or not this piece was ever manufactured, I'm very curious. Please comment. So these NWS screwdrivers are manufactured by Philo. Philo has a new product out. These are not as nice as the Ergonic. So this is a page out of the Philo 2022 catalog. And they say the new number nine has a solid impact resistant core. And all the handle sizes are scaled to the required torques and the blades are made of chrome vanadium. These handles are not mushy like the ergonic handles. So these Philo ergonic are mushy and soft and they are really nice in my opinion. The Philo number nines are hard. You know, this black over molding is grippy. This is hard plastic, this is hard plastic, but these Philo number nines are not mushy like the ergonic. So these ergonics are still Philo's top of the line comfort handle. So the date codes on these were all 2023, except for two of them that showed date codes of 2021. So if these are a new product in their 2022 catalog, when were these originally released? I don't even know. And while we're on the topic of Philo screwdrivers, let me show you this Heiko. So I just bought one of these. So these Heiko are also made by Philo. These are molybdenum vanadium. These are chrome vanadium. When Philo made these screwdrivers for Heiko, they followed the shape of the ergonic, but these are not soft like Philo ergonic. And these are made in Germany. 
And I also wanted to buy one example of these different Baco style handles. They looked really interesting and I just wanted to get one example. This is a two and a half millimeter ball drive hex. It does not say on it where it is made. If anybody knows where this style is made, please comment. Although this handle style is very interesting, the Baco Ergo style is still my favorite Baco handle style. And this example is made in Spain. Now we've got this set of CK VDE screwdrivers. So CK is Carl Kammerling International Limited. And this set is the Dextro VDE Slim Glow. That's right, these glow in the dark. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already knew that. Precision tips, slim shafts, premium quality molybdenum vanadium, VDE approved, long fine neck. So this neck, we're gonna take a look at that. They injection mold directly to the blade, a glow in the dark, they're ergonomically shaped. Then they've got some, some gripping ridges here, I'll show you those. Tip types are marked on the top of the caps, and these are made in Germany. So here's a closer look at a slim style, posi drive, glow in the dark, made in Germany, VDE screwdriver. Here are the gripping contours that they were referring to right here. One thing to know about these handles is, is that they're thinner this way than this way. So these are an oval, not a perfect circle. And we can see the tip style marking here. So the red compound is grippy. The glow in the dark compound is the slippery hard plastic. Right here, it's circular. It's not the oval. This part is circular. So spinning it feels natural. So this screwdriver is more chunky, more bulky right here. You know, it does feel different. It, you know, this one's got some of that slippery hard plastic here, whereas this one is very grippy. We've got a square through hole. Uh, making the handle flat and flattening these sides all right, let me see if I can get this on camera. Put that like this. I'm gonna tilt this. It doesn't roll. Okay, I'm tilting that pretty far, okay? Let's try this NWS. Okay, so the, so the anti-roll flats line up with the slippery plastic. So when, it, when you put it on a surface, the anti-roll side is slippery plastic side down. Okay, now that, that's kind of interesting. Whereas the CK has grippy side down on the anti-roll side. So it's more sticky. So, it, so on a smooth surface like this, it grips it. The CK set came with two posies and three flats, and there's no Phillips. Okay, so let's take a look at the flats. You can see that the largest size of the flat, so it's kind of a hybrid between a wedge grind and a hollow grind. Yeah, I wouldn't call that a parallel grind. And then the two small sizes are wedge ground. CK compared to the NWS, very similar grind, slightly different but similar. This is a Japanese annex. You can see that it's much more parallel ground. So it's hollow ground, but it's much more parallel. Uh, less of a wedge on the Japanese example. So here's a Vessel VDE. That is a parallel hollow grind. There's no, there's no wedge to the vessel, whereas there is some wedge on the NWS and the CK examples. Okay, and last but not least is the Bondhouse. Proudly, 100% made in Germany. And this is a nice size quarter inch socket driver. It's a nice larger handle. You know, for sockets, it's nicer to have a larger handle. Here's the Philo Organic handle on the quarter drive socket driver. Let's just quickly take a look at the socket wobble on the socket driver. 
This amount of wobble is actually very typical. Here's the phyllo. I'd say that's probably the same. The best one I got is the matador, and it's because of this piece here. There's not much wobble there at all, but it's short and it's a small handle. Hard to kind of torque anything with that. The Vero with this uh, bl adapter blade in it, uh, and this one, and this one's got about the same amount of socket wobble. Here's compared to the Koken. The Koken has the wobble feature on the end and it locks. Same amount of socket wobble as the Bond House. So nice big handle on the Bond House. Okay, I'm exhausted. This tool haul was probably a little overly ambitious. Maybe I should have broken up, broken it up into two or more videos. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was informative. I hope it helped. And as always, thank you for watching.